Hello, I think we are live. Yeah, I think so. Let's wait and see. Just always want to get confirmation that we're actually live. Hello in the YouTube chat, if you can hear us. Yes, say hello. We're, we're looking through the chat in YouTube right now. Cool. All right, yeah, my, great, my YouTube is up. Um, people are saying no in chat. Hi, you're live. Hi, Mitch Mitchell. Cool. Um, hi, everyone. Nice to see you here. Um, let me, since this is going to be like posted on YouTube after the fact, I'll do like a clean start, but hello, everyone. Uh, good to see you here. Um, oh, I see some familiar faces. Uh, Lisa, I recognize you. Hi, everyone. Um, okay, cool. So let's go ahead and start it now. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Alex Kuntz. I'm a curriculum developer here at Codecademy, and I'm here with Sophie. Hey, everyone. I'm Sophie. I'm also a curriculum developer here at Codecademy. And we are super excited to kind of kick off this new live stream series that we're calling CS101. We are live right now on YouTube. This will also be posted after the fact on YouTube. So if you can't make these live, um, they'll always be posted after the fact on YouTube. Um, right now, I think we're streaming on a couple of different uh, platforms. We're on Twitter and YouTube and Facebook, and I think Twitch, although our Twitch channel is pretty small. <laughs> um, but Sophie and I are looking at the YouTube chat primarily. So if you're watching this live and want to chat with us, um, feel free to jump over into the YouTube chat. Um, yeah, I see a bunch of people are in the chat already. We have them from all over the world, which is super exciting. Um, yeah, if you are in the chat, why don't you go ahead and tell us kind of how much coding experience you have, uh, what, you're, what you're looking for from this series, kind of just start, uh, start chatting in that, in that chat. And meanwhile, I can introduce what, what the heck we're doing here. So. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, this is our first live stream for this series. So we want to get a sense of where everybody's at and what everyone is coming to this to learn. So. Um, so that would be great. Cool. Yeah. Let, so let's uh, let's describe what we are doing here. And I see in the chat, yeah, somebody says, this seems like this is based off of CS50 at Harvard. And I would say that that is pretty accurate, where this live stream series that we're doing is kind of a, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a preview of what you would normally expect in your introductory computer science class at a university or even an AP computer science class in high school. And one of the reasons why we're doing this right now is that this is a part of our big back to school campaign where we just launched a student pricing uh, plan where there's a discount for students. Um, we're running this series where you know, uh, there's a, a student hub page where we give a lot of kind of resources for students that are starting the school year. Um, we obviously realize that this school year is pretty different. And so, yeah, we hope that this can be a valuable resource for folks that are uh, you know, just starting to learn programming. Yeah, and for a little bit of context, so I see a lot of people responding in the chat about how much experience they have, a lot of people with no experience, a lot of people with a little experience here and there looking for a, a little more um, background or a refresher. Um, so in the spirit of sharing our experiences, <laughs> I will also share that. Um, so I come from a data science and statistics background. So I'm actually a curriculum developer specifically for data science content, but um, in the context of learning more about statistics and data science, I had to learn a lot of programming skills. Um, and so I'm coming at programming from kind of a alternative background where I learned R first, then learned Python, and then I'm even just now still on Codecademy learning a little bit of JavaScript. JavaScript. Um, and so part of this is a learning opportunity for me as well. And hopefully that will help me answer some questions that you all have because I'm also coming at it from that perspective of this is a little bit of a refresher for me too. <laughs> Alex, on the other hand. <laughs> yeah, it's what Sophie and I were just talking. I think we kind of have not opposite, but very different experiences with programming where Sophie learned it kind of um, later on in her uh, college and grad school. Um, and I, and kind of like from a applied sense where you focused on statistics, you needed to learn how to program to run experiments and run tests. And that's how you learn programming. I have the kind of more traditional American uh, computer science college experience where I took 
the AP courses in high school. I got a traditional like computer science degree from college. I've taught computer science in high schools for a couple of years. And so I'm kind of like locked into what a normal, you know, kind of introductory computer science curriculum looks like. And I think that, let me go ahead and, and share my screen real quick and I can show the, the syllabus that we're gonna be working through in this stream. Um, like somebody said in the chat, this is going to be pretty similar to what you'd see in CS50 from Harvard or really any of your kind of introductory computer science um, courses. And really kind of the thing that I want to stress is that you can teach computer science in two ways. One, it, it can be like really applied like what Sophie did, where you're going to be like, I want to build a website or I want to, you know, like run this, you know, experiment for my stats class or something. It can be in that really applied way. Uh, or it can be in this way, which is kind of teaching computational thinking. And this is a little bit harder to describe because like in the, in the first way, when you're building a website, you're like, oh, I made a website. I did it. I learned this skill. And computational thinking kind of sounds like nonsense, right? It's like kind of this like ambiguous thing that you don't really know what it means. Um, but the skills that we're trying to teach are basically the content of this course. We want to teach you to start like recognizing patterns and seeing themes within programming and computer science. And the really cool thing is that these fundamentals and themes and patterns can basically be applied to any programming language. So the way that this course is organized is that each one of these modules, we're going to have a, um, kind of a couple of introductory lessons where the big ideas are taught kind of separate from the code itself. And then we'll look at that code in Python. Um, and then we'll, we have some code challenges at the end as well. Um, let me resize my screen here to, so I can see the chat. Um, cool, I love how active the, the chat is. Sophie, if the, anything pops up in the chat that you think is worth calling out or talking about, always feel free to interrupt me or, or say something that I miss. Will do. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, this is, a, this is a course on Codecademy called CS101 Livestream. You can find it in our catalog. It's linked all over the place. If you found this, um, if you found this from like the blog post that we that we linked to, there should be a link to this course in the YouTube description. There's a link to this course. Hopefully, it's easier for you to to get here. Um, in terms of how you want you should interact with this content, there's a couple of things that you could do. You could either take the content beforehand, right? So right now we are doing this module, all this stuff about variables. Next week, we'll be doing functions. So there's a couple of ways to interact. You can take the content beforehand and like come prepared with questions. And uh, another good way to do this is you can like follow along with us um, as, we're, as we're coding live. And then finally, if you're watching this, you know, a recorded version, or you want to come back to this later, you can always, you know, bring up the YouTube video and then code along with us later. Yeah, I see a couple of quick questions. One is why Python and not JavaScript? Um, and then the other is, can I take this if I want to learn basic data science? Yes. So, <laughs> uh, so if you want to take the data science question? Sure. I, what I'll say is, I think anybody who wants to do data science needs some programming skills at this point. Um, data science has kind of become this intersection between, uh, between computer science and statistics, and so, to be a data scientist, you need to be able to work with code. Um, so this is definitely a good starting point for that. I think our data science career path has a ton of Python um, curriculum at the beginning of it anyway. So this will be a great way to prep for that. Um, and you wanna take the Python versus JavaScript one? Yeah, so Python versus JavaScript, really you could do any of these kind of introductory languages, right? Python, JavaScript, Java, C++, C Sharp, Swift, like any of these languages are going to have these fundamental ideas. The reason why I choose Python is that it's a little bit easier to just like get up and running. So for example, for JavaScript, which is very kind of intertwined with HTML and CSS, uh, to get kind of basic things happening in JavaScript, it requires a little bit of understanding of like how it's interacting with HTML. And so in, that, in this particular example, Python doesn't have to deal with any of that. Um, you'll be able to see as we get into this Python lesson, it's pretty easy to just kind of like immediately start up, hit the run button and run some Python code. Yeah. Um, 
Cool. Uh, yes, I see, I see some comments in the chat about, is this course for free? This, this particular course is paid. Um, it's for pro only, but we have free Python content out there. Um, and there's a lot more con there's a lot more of this content in our paths as well. So this is like a good little taste of what, um, pro content looks like. I think you're going to need to go back to the first exercise. Yes. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So let's let's dive into this. This and hopefully this exercise loads. Go to refresh. Um, really quickly. So I saw a question in the chat about pandas and numpy, and those are Python libraries that are not going to be covered in this course. Um, those are data science specific libraries, uh, which if you're going to do data science, you would also need to learn a little bit about. But those are not covered here. Yeah, and again, kind of like comparing this to a traditional computer science course, that sort of thing would maybe be a second year course or an elective of like, I'm in college and I wanna learn data science. I'm gonna take a course about pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib, all that sort of stuff. The stuff that we're gonna focus on here is, you know, my first computer science course ever, basically. Yes. Um, okay, cool. Uh, let's start by talking about variables in general. And so we have a couple of cool little applets here. I'm not going to, you know, read through the exact text of this, but we can start to get the idea of what a variable is. And a variable is a concept that's going to exist in any language that any any programming language um, for the most part that you're interested in. So whether you're interested in web development or data science or straight up computer science, you're going to be interacting with all of these kind of fundamentals. And so the idea behind a variable is that a variable is a place where you can store data of some sort. And so we have a little applet here where we can start storing data. So you can see I already have, um, you know, some forest, rocks, uh, grass, um, let's throw in rocks. I think we will later see like, I think there's a lake, <laughs> maybe not. What else was there? Snow? No, we'll see. We'll, we'll get later into this this exercise and we'll see all the different types that we can build. Um, it actually so, on the side there what you're supposed to fill. Them <laughs> yeah, so on the side here, it says, okay, let's fill, fill each row with these different things. Um, Sophie, so for this particular exercise, what are our variables here? So in this particular exercise, we're not really defining variables um, or, or we're redefining some variables. So every time we have a block that is showing us grass, um, then the, the pattern for that block is set to grass. Um, and so in this example, we're rewriting the word grass every time we want that to happen. Yeah, I would say that we have uh, like nine variables here, right? Each one of these is a bucket that can hold some value. And we kind of have a limited number of things of what that value can be, right? It, right now, it seems like it, only, it can only be grass, rocks, forest. Um, there might, might be some other types here, but that's kind of the starting point for variables is that I can have a word that is associated with some value. And so, you know, eight right now is gonna be associated with grass. All right, so that's kind of the basics of variables. I can put, I can have one thing and I can put, uh, I can put something in that variable. Cool. Next we have, okay, now that I've stored that variable, I can use it in multiple places. So again, this is the same idea of, let me define terrain one as one of my variables here. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm using it in three different places. Right, so this is the idea of like, you'll see in coding, a lot of variables that we have have a lot of times are numbers. So, you know, uh, when you're when you're checking out an order from Amazon, like your, your total, right? That might be a variable that's stored somewhere in Amazon's system where it's storing a number. A lot of times uh, words are, are stored in variables. Those are usually called strings where maybe the, the title of the item is stored in a uh, stored in a variable um, on an Amazon page. And then that title can be used all over the page. So here we have three different variables. Ah. Actually, and this kind of 
this kind of is an interesting point of uh, right now, if I like typo it, like I just did, like, let me try to switch terrain three to rocks. Well, that was a terrible example. Let me just switch it back to forest by mistyping forest with two R's. So nothing happened. Uh, this is like maybe our first bug in programming, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, so if we did, can you see like an equivalent of like in programming in Python or any other language? How might this be a bug where I have this variable and I'm trying to assign it as something and it's it doesn't take it, right? Like, when does that ha happen elsewhere in programming? I mean, <laughs> it can happen in a lot of different circumstances. I think in this case, basically, we're re we're trying to reference some some patterns that exist or that have been defined elsewhere. So somewhere in the back end of this code, we've defined that the word forest is going to have this particular pattern associated with it, but we haven't defined anything for this double R forest. Um, and so the computer doesn't know what to put there. So um, so that so it's not doing anything when we press run. Or when yeah, we and I think I think that this is like a really good example of what programming feels like a lot of the times where there's these rules in the background, right? Somewhere there's a rule that says forest with one R is going to produce this particular image. And, and if I do it with two R's, it's going to totally break. It's not going to do anything. And so somewhere that rule has been defined. And what it means to learn programming is to essentially like understand what those rules are for a particular language, where with Python, you know, there's going to be rules like, oh, I need to put single quotes around something, or I need to, you know, I'm defining this thing as a double, which means that it has to have a decimal point. Um, so kind of what programming is for the most part is that somebody else has written a bunch of rules and we have to like understand what those rules are and then we can make new things. And eventually you can get to the point where like you're the one defining what the rules are, where, which is like kind of what we've done here, where here at Codecademy, we built this little applet. We defined the rules for this for this thing that you're interacting with um, that other people can use. Yeah, cool. I think before you move on, the one thing that I wanna point out here um, is that, so in the, in the first exercise we saw and this exercise, we're really doing the same things. If you're, if you're following the instructions with in exercise one about what goes in what row, um, you're generating exactly the same patterns. But in the first exercise, you're having to write down nine different words. Um, so every time you want grass, you're having to write down the word grass. And in the second exercise, what we did is we defined some variables. Uh, so graph, one for grass, one for rocks, and one for forest. And then we're reusing those variables in different places. So we've reduced down writing out nine different things with some repetition. We've reduced it down in the second exercise to writing only three things down. Um, and there's now no repeti repetition in the things that we're writing down. Um, and so I think that's another big, there's lots of ways that we can do that kind of thing in programming where we're taking out some repetition that if you were trying to do this manually, like color this in, you'd have to you know, pick out which, which block goes in which place. And by writing a program to do this and using variables in a, in a sort of smart way, we're now reducing down a lot of the work that we need to do. We have to write less things out. Yeah, that, that's a great point. That's like one of the core things that's great about variables is that you can reuse the same information everywhere. Um, a couple of other little like subtle things that are happening here is that right now these variables like kind of exist, right? But they don't point to anything. They're, they're blank, right? They're showing a blank screen. This is something that will come up in a lot of programming languages of like you can define a variable without giving it value. And then another thing that I was doing here kind of um, without even thinking about it, right, was reassigning things. So this variable right now is holding grass, but I can reassign it to hold uh, forest. Uh, and if I can spell <laughs> forest. <laughs> I also do see some questions about is this JavaScript? Or is this Python? Um, <laughs> and it actually is JavaScript uh, that's being used to generate this uh, this web page. So right now we're um, we're in the kind of 
part of this live stream where we're going to talk about the big ideas. And then hopefully a little bit later, we'll get into the Python code. Um, but right now we're actually not writing any code directly. Uh, although this, this page is JavaScript. Yeah, and I, I think like you might you might be familiar with Scratch, which is a program built by MIT, which is really kind of like GUI slash visual based. And that's kind of what we're doing here, right? I, I would actually argue that this is still programming, right? We're still telling the computer to do something and that and it's doing something. It just has like different syntax than traditional JavaScript or Python. And uh, for uh, for those of you, I, I think if I heard the word syntax in my first computer science class, I'd be like never use the word syntax again. I don't know what that means, right? It's just like a scary word to, to encounter if you've like never programmed before. Syntax is just like the, again, the rules of the language, meaning um, the syntax of this language is I have to put stuff in these boxes and it seems like there's a reserved set of words that do anything. Um, so syntax is like the rules of the language. Cool. Um, yeah, and we can actually show off the like behind the scenes stuff um, of, this, of this program. We can take a look at the JavaScript if people are interested in. Um, cool. Uh, let's see, changing the value of a variable. We kind of talked about this already. Um, we've now replaced these variables with different options just so I don't have to type them in. Mm -hmm. And we can overwrite the old value with a new value. Um, and, you know, there is some implications about that. It seems like it completely forgets about the old value, right? If, I, if I'm on lake, I have no memory that I was just on town or whatever I was just on. Mm -hmm. um, so basically that's an important part of variables is that not only can they store value and be used in many different places, but you can also overwrite their value. But when you do that, you kind of lose memory of what it was before. I love all the patterns, this is great. <laughs> I know, the, the, road, the town one, did you ever have, have that like play mat that was the like the town grid? No. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I, I wonder if anyone out there knows what I'm talking about, but there's like an iconic like play mat that, uh, that I had when I was, you know, five years old that looked just like this. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's get to the last. So for people asking what language is this written in, you can see here now we've moved to kind of a more traditional programming view of, of this instead of having text boxes to enter in text and you know, variables associated with those text boxes, I can now write, this, this happens to be JavaScript. Personally, I think it doesn't really matter that it's JavaScript. Like the takeaway message of this is not, we're writing JavaScript. The takeaway message here is what variables are, different ways that you can interact with variables. And this happens to be one of the ways that JavaScript, or this is how you write variables in JavaScript. And you can even see that we're like, um, Let's see, what were some of my options there? I mean, I'll do forest again, but. <laughs> I think there was lake yeah. and beach might've been one. Yeah, and for people out there that know JavaScript, you can even tell that I'm like kind of being lazy here. JavaScript, normally you would end with semicolons. You could define variables with like var or let. So technically I'm writing JavaScript here. But again, the point is not that this is JavaScript. The point is let's internalize what it means to be a variable. Um, and so that way we can use it in any language because we're about to use it in Python rather than JavaScript. Yeah, definitely. There's something here that we haven't really done in the other exercises. Sophie, do you have an idea of like, what's different here <laughs> than other exercises? And if you don't, because I'm just springing this on you, like. In, in us creating these variables, what are we doing that we haven't done elsewhere? I don't know. So we are defining the variable name, right? Up to this point, the variable name has been defined for us. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it. here the variable name was like terrain one, terrain two, terrain three. Here, we have to define the variable name ourselves, right? I can't just put like forest because this program is associating these blocks with a particular variable name. Gotcha, yeah. We've taken away, I guess, the, um, the nice format where it allows us to just type in the word and automatically assign the variable. Now we are doing that explicitly in code. 
Yeah. I, I, another uh, slight but important detail is that we are putting these words in quotes, which I saw somebody in the chat um, uh, brought, brought us to that attention. Yeah. So that's, again, like very specific JavaScript syntax of before the syntax of our created programming language, right? The syntax of this one is like a drop down menu um, with no quotes. The syntax of this one, when we were entering in text, we didn't have any quotes around it. The syntax of JavaScript is if I want to put in a word or a string, I have to put it around quotes. And for JavaScript, e either single or double quotes will work. Yeah. Um, you got a quick question uh, whether you can give a quick look at the folders in the top. Um, <laughs> and I think it's worth <laughs> showing briefly. Um, I think one of the things about learning programming skills is that like there's a there's so much to learn and I've seen this a little bit in the chat already that people get overwhelmed and so one of the things that happens on the Code Academy platform is that we usually only have one uh one file open at a time so that you're not overwhelmed and kind of digging into all the nitty-gritty you're kind of focusing on the one skill that is being taught in that exercise but it is I think useful to at least see that if you wanted to look a little further at what's going on behind the scenes, um, there's some more files in here that are actually being used to generate this screen on the right. And so, yeah, I think uh, on, I think these might actually be hidden from uh, from folks by default. I have uh, my special authoring mode turned on, so we can yeah. kind of have a behind the scenes look at some of this stuff. But yeah, let's look at the the rest of the JavaScript code, right? Because we were writing our code in main.js, but then we also have this JavaScript file that's like doing the rest of the work. And so you can see, right? There's a lot of stuff going on here and it might immediately be overwhelming. But one of the things that we can look for are things that we currently understand, which are variables. And so you can see that we are creating variables associated with each picture, basically. This is a, this is a link to the picture that we're using for grass. And so we're storing it in a variable named grass. And so later on in our program, if we ever need to like talk about this picture again, we can just use this variable. I think one thing that might be interesting is, so we've asked you to specifically declare a variable named one, two, or three. Let's see if we can find, um, uh, control F isn't gonna really work, but let's see, here we go. Um, so here's where we are using the variable from the other file. We're taking your variable two and storing it in a, another variable named input vari uh, value two. And then we're doing stuff with that, with that variable, right? So you can kind of get the sense of how, how variables are used in this larger system. Yeah. All right. I say we close it so yes. that we're not, <laughs> not confused. People. And I think we should try to like get through these other big picture ones kind of quickly so we can get into a little bit of the coding. I think we should even jump to Python right now and do like declaring variables in Python, um, changing variables in Python, all that sort of stuff. And I might even jump around in this exercise a little bit to, to cover the stuff that we've talked about. Um, so let's see. So let's jump right to variables. We can talk about printing and strings and all this stuff in more detail in the future. But let's jump right to variables. And all right, so cool. This is Python. It looks pretty similar to what we just saw in JavaScript. Some of the stuff that we just skipped over was, let, let's talk about it. Two, two important things, I suppose. Um, the print function. So right now, if I run this code, and this code might even be the starting code, let me, or the, the solution code, let me reset this. I went through all this stuff before the stream. So um, yeah, the code might uh, might have been complete there. So we're asking you to update the variable me uh, meal to reflect each meal of the day before we print it. So meal starts with an English muffin, and then we print breakfast followed by whatever is stored in my meal variable. For lunch, Sophie, what'd you have for lunch today? I haven't eaten lunch yet. OK, none. Because, <laughs> no. because we are streaming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat a sandwich, I think. Nice. OK, yeah. And dinner, <laughs> um, let's see. So 
Cool. We updated meal to be a lunch meal, and then we printed lunch followed by whatever's in meal. Now let's update meal to be dinner. So I can do meal equals, um, let's see, for dinner, I'll have Indian food. Ooh. I love Indian food. <laughs> Me too. Hey. Okay, cool. So, right, a couple of things that we're doing here. One is that concept of we can declare a variable. So we declare the variable meal at the very top of our file here um, and start it as an, at an English muffin. But then we can continue to change it as we go, right? We, we then say, okay, meal is no longer an English muffin. We've overwritten it. It's now none because we are streaming. We use it, we print it out, and then we change it again. When I say like we use meal three times, what, like, what do I mean by that? <laughs> in this case, it's pretty simple. So in this case, we're just printing it out as um, a string in some bigger context. So like before each each time we print it out, we're saying what the meal is. And so, um, and so we're using it in three different contexts, right? We're using it as um, a printout of what our breakfast was, our lunch was, and what our dinner was. And this is kind of similar to what we saw before with the patterns in those blocks, because before it's kind of like we were defining what those patterns should be. And then every time we printed them, they looked different depending on what was stored in that variable. And here now, every time we're printing the text that's contained in meal, we're printing it in a different context, um, but we're still printing the context or the contents of that variable meal. Yeah, I think that that's kind of another thing that we skimmed over almost because it's almost like second nature when you're interacting with those applets. Like in those applets, not only were we defining the variable, but we were using them in some way. And we kind of use them in the same way every time, right? The way that we used those variables was show an image on, on the screen in the same way. And we did that for every variable, right? In the same way that the way that we're using the variables here is printing them out. And again, the idea behind like learning to program is understanding what you can do with different things. And so it seems like a thing that we can do with this variable is we can print it. But we can also do other things with it, right? And this is stuff that we'll get to in later exercises. Whoops. Um, yeah, like, so we'll get into other things that we can do with variables later on. But let me give a little brief preview here where I can say um, lunch is, um, this is my lunch. So a thing, another thing that I can do with variables other than printing them out is combining them. So I can say um, breakfast and lunch equals meal plus lunch. And then I can, so that's using these two variables in one way. I'm combining them together. Again, you kind of have to have a little bit of knowledge to know that plus is gonna combine them together in some way, but that's what learning to program is. It's learning to understand like, what does plus mean in this context? And then I can combine those into a new variable. And now I can use that variable in, a, in any way that I want. Um, in this case, printing it out. So let me get rid of kind of everything else that I have down here. So there we go. I'm kind of using variables in two ways now. I'm concatenating them. I'm adding them together. And then I'm also printing them. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the things that always surprised or that surprised me about uh, Python when I first learned some basic syntax was that you could add strings together and it would concatenate them. Um, and I think some of the other exercises in here, which maybe we'll go back to now, are about, are about different variable types. And so um, what we were just looking at were strings, um, which are basically just like text that we've contained in, um, in quotes. And so we are using this operator, like a plus sign that normally we use with numbers, but all of a sudden um, when we're using it with strings, it has this behavior that, I mean, it makes sense that it puts the two strings together, but it's not necessarily obvious unless um, you understand the rules of Python and how Python is interpreting uh, your command. So. Um, I think it, 
I think it's interesting one that Python does that not all programming languages do. Um, and also two, it's, it's kind of interesting to see uh, if you had defined your meals or defined your variables as numbers, the way that that plus sign works is going to be different. So it's dependent, that operator is dependent on your variable types, which is like an interesting. Yeah, let, let's look at, let's look at in, uh, numbers. And then maybe we can jump back to the second uh, kind of conceptual lesson, which shows this idea of like variables have types associated with them and the things that you can do with different types is different depending on the type. So let's jump to numbers real quick, just to see how numbers work in Python. Um, it's pretty similar to what you might expect. So there's differences between numbers with a decimal point and numbers without a decimal point. And this is something that happens in most programming languages and most programming languages handle them slightly differently. Um, and it's, when I, when I describe this stuff, it's like, again, I, for this particular lesson and this particular series, the things that we're looking at are like really big picture where there's a lot of small details that we're doing that we're like kind of breezing over here. And I think one of the small details that I would like to breeze over here is like the distinction between an integer and a float. Um, really kind of like the big picture thing that I wanna highlight in this lesson is that idea behind data types where if I have numbers, whether they're integers or floats and like, don't worry about the difference between them, the plus sign is gonna act differently than a string, which is, uh, you know, those words in quotes. So let's, let's see what they're asking us to do here. Um, so they're asking us to create two variables, one called release year. Let's say this movie was released in not 2020, 2020 is a bit of a bummer. Let's do 2018. <laughs> and then runtime, let's say it is, uh, you know, 250. Let's hit run and see if that works. Oh, let me, uh, I have annoying things because I'm in author mode. Uh, cool. So that, that went ahead and worked. You'll notice that nothing happened. This would kind of be equivalent. This is because we're not using these variables in any context, right? This would kind of be equivalent if we just had those input boxes back in our applet and we didn't have any you know, uh, images being shown, right? The variables are created, they're given value, but it's kind of useless at this point because we're not doing anything with it. So in Python, the way to like show the variable and kind of similar to how we showed the variable through images in the applets is with the print statement. So I can now print release here and should hopefully see 2018. Yeah, I got an error down here because I didn't follow whatever step this is. But you can see, there we go, 2018. Um, let's play, eh, let's, let's finish this exercise just so it stops giving us error messages. Um, cool. Now create a variable defined called rating out of 10 and give it a float number between one and 10. So again, a float number in the very simplified version of Python is just going to be a number with a decimal point. So I can say that movie was an 8.5 or a sure, 5.6 out of 10. And cool, I just created a float. Sophie, what sort of stuff should we do with these numbers to like demonstrate the data type stuff? Well, I guess first might be to add some of them. Like uh, you could say maybe uh, start, you could have like a start time or something and add the runtime to it. Sure, <laughs> how about we do a uh, current year? Is 2020. And then and so, years to a remake or something and add it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was going to do subtraction. I was going to do how, how long has it been since it was released, right? Okay. So I can do um, years since release is um, current year minus release year. And then I would print that. Yes, good call. So print that. Um, we're getting, I, I think there's a couple of questions in the chat about um, like IDEs and text editors and things like that. Um, and so I just wanna quickly just say, uh, 
Everything that we're demoing right now, I think the, the benefit of Codecademy is that you get this kind of workspace. And so in this particular lesson, the workspace is in Python, which means um, you your code is going to be interpreted as Python and you can kind of write code in the script.py file and you can run it and you can see the output. Um, but then on your own computer, you're going to need to have you know, some way to interpret Python code if you want to replicate this on your own. Um, and we're not going to cover this today, but there are a lot of resources on Codecademy um, to, to learn how to set that up on your computer. So, um, yeah, it's funny when I, when I teach in a normal classroom, not online, like a lot of the first couple of classes are all about setting up your own machine in order to like be able to run this stuff. And it's, kind of a bummer, right? Because it's like, that's all a, ne that's a necessary skill to know how to do, but it's not the main skills that are like fundamental to computer science where, right, the ideas of like computational thinking, starting to see the world as variables that can interact with each other and be used in a certain way. Like all of that stuff is really kind of like the meat of an intro computer science class. And it's, ki it's kind of a bummer that you know, it's a little bit complicated to set up on your own machine. And so I think that that really is one of the strengths of Codecademy is that you can learn how to do all of this stuff kind of in our safe little environment. And then once you feel comfortable with those fundamentals, you can, you well, one, you're probably like more com confident with coding a little bit because you've interacted with it a little bit. So the setup process will be a little bit less scary. But then two, um, you've already like seen the, the fundamental thinking. And so you can like immediately transfer that to your own computer once uh, once you learn how to set it up on your own computer. Yep. And I think Kenny has also sent some links in the chat, so. Yeah, let me, um, so to really demo this difference between different data types of strings versus ints or doubles, let me change back to that being a plus. So this is now not gonna be years since release. So I'm gonna just say, this is an added, uh, or whatever. I'm going to call it my number. This doesn't really represent anything anymore, right? It's not years since released. I'm just adding together the current year plus the re release year. And this should be, right, 4,038. So that's an example of me using the plus sign in the context of two, uh, well, this is even an integer and a float. So I'm combining an integer and a float with a plus sign. In the last exercise, I combined hello and I combined two strings with a plus sign and it smushed them together, right? And so this is a good example of like, Python knows that when I have two numbers and I'm using the pl plus sign, I don't want to smush those numbers together because that would be kind of, you know, silly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I have strings, the defined method of plus is uh, smush it together. Uh, some other kind of cool things that we can experiment with is like, what if we do hello plus a number? Cool. Um, so if we do a hello plus a number, we get kind of our first error message here. And you can see that, okay, I have a type error. I must be a string and not an integer. So it's saying that I don't know what to do if you tell me to add a string and an integer. Um, let's experiment with some other things because I know that there are some cool kind of, you know, not hidden features, but maybe unexpected features. If I do hello times three, that will actually work where that will multiply the, um, that will multiply the string three times and smush the three results together. So you can kind of see that, you know, depending on your data type, and depending on the operator, the thing that you're doing to it, um, there can be different results. And again, that's kind of what it means to learn a language is to understand what these different results are. One thing that I, again, went through kind of quickly or without even noting is that previously I've been using variables everywhere. And this time I'm not, right? I'm using a string and a number. I'm not using it in a variable. And so, you know, there are pluses and minuses to this, right? I can do this kind of quickly where 
um, hello times three, I don't need to store it in a variable, but then I also lost the result, right? I can't really, I would have to do it again, right? I would have to then say, you know, hello times three again, if I wanted that. And it, and if I stored in a variable ahead of time, I, uh, I could use it again. Okay, cool. Let me, to kind of underscore this topic of different variable types, and I know we only have 15 minutes left, so we can kind of fly through this. I wanna go back to the syllabus. And I know that we have this kind of conceptual lesson on data types. Or again, the thing that I really wanna stress is that we are learning Python, but the thing that we are really learning is these fundamental topics. So this fundamental topic is different data types do different things. And so we have a couple of you know, fun little applets here to um, play around with that. So I can say, okay, if my, if my input is a kangaroo and I tell it to capitalize, my output will be kangaroo capitalized. But if my variable type is a number and I tell it to capitalize, I get an error message. So that's exactly what we just saw in um, in Python, right? Where I was trying to do, I was trying to use a function or an operator, or I was trying to use something in Python that uh, it where the data type didn't align with it. It didn't know how to do an integer plus a string. Just like here, it doesn't know how to capitalize a number. Um, cool. So yeah. We, in this, in this example, we kind of go through common data types. Uh, this one's fun. So if you, did you ever have the book Zoom as a child? The book Zoom? Yeah. No. It was a book like this where you just zoomed out and out and out. And actually, uh, it's a kind of a shame because my browser window is so small. We didn't make this super reactive, I guess, <laughs> um, where it's a little bit hard to see, but you can zoom out, right? So here's a, here's a representation of numbers. Um, where a computer can very easily store very small numbers or huge numbers. Um, another common data type is strings. We were just interacting with strings in Python. A string is a series of characters. So I love CS 101. <laughs> and let me make that slightly wider. That might break everything. <laughs> reload. I love the artwork on these. I know they're super fun. I, I really, I really love this course that, uh, this was made by Zoe and Nick, um, who are two great curriculum developers. Um, I like this, this exercise in particular, because it kind of draws attention to the fact that spaces are characters. Um, something that you might've noticed when we were concatenating or smushing our strings together is that there was no space in between. And that's because we would have to tell the computer that we wanted a space there if we actually wanted a space there. So there's again, like little details that are like almost second to second nature that you have to really think about when you are programming and making variables and strings. Um, Boolean, all right, Sophie, what's the deal with Booleans? Oh, Booleans are the best. <laughs> I thought I read through this earlier and I didn't know that uh, they were named after someone named George Boole. So that's yeah. cool. <laughs> um, But so, so Booleans, there was even a question in the chat about this earlier and some very kind people already answered it. Um, but basically a Boolean uh, value can be either true or false. Um, and so it's kind of, it's another data type that you can use to kind of check conditions. So a lot of times you might want to do something if some condition is met. And in order to check that condition, um, you need to be able to check whether a value is true or false. Um, and so that's what they're useful for. Yeah. And just like with numbers or strings, they're also variables. So in this example, we can turn the lights on or off. And so if you were to think about this in a more traditional syntax. Again, I'll, I'll contend that this is programming. We are writing syntax here. It's just that the way that we change a variable is through this toggle rather than through text. Is So we can use this toggle to change the variable from true to false, or you know, it's not even explicitly called true and false. I guess it is here. Um, you know, Here it's not explicitly called true or false. And then now that we have this variable, we can do something with it. And the thing that we do with it is you know, either show the sun graphic or show the moon graphic. 
Um, again, I think it's like important to underscore like we can create these variables, but then in order for these variables to mean anything, you have to do something with them. And that like doing something with them is almost second nature where you don't even really realize that something is actively happening here. Um, just like, you know, we didn't even talk about it uh, in the very first example with the squares. We didn't even really realize that, oh, we're creating variables and using them. Um, but yeah, important to realize like we can both create variables and then have to use them in some way. Um, cool. And then, yeah, for folks that want to see the behind the scenes, let me, uh, um, sure. Let me turn on my, uh, maybe, I don't know. I didn't turn it on. Um, yeah. So for folks that want to see the behind the scenes of these little applets, again, this is, these are written in JavaScript and, uh, we can take a peek at the JavaScript where there's a lot going on here, right? But the important things to note are that somewhere we have variables that, let's see if we can find, here, let's first say capitalize and let me make this wider. Um, I don't even know where the, let me reload this. Looking for the input button here. Hmm. This might be an issue because my screen is all uh, small because I'm streaming. Um, well, anyways, there should be an input, uh, like an input button um, somewhere here. So we could like choose a word to capitalize. Oh no, it's over here, of course. <laughs> um, right, so I can define the input over here. So I can say, Sophie, and then I can tell it to capitalize, I can run it, um, and then tell it to capitalize that input. And it's a little bit screwed up again because I changed the size here. Definitely Let's... does say Sophie in cap all capital letters though. Yes. Um, <laughs> there we go, there's Sophie, even though it should be down there. <laughs> um, cool, so we can like kind of peek into the JavaScript here to see what it looks like. Um, let's see if I can find where I'm using my variable called my string. So let's see. Should be able to find like a capitalized function that's being used somewhere in here. Left my string. Yeah, I don't think control F works in these, unfortunately. Yeah. Hmm. It's gotta be a way where we grab my string somewhere. It might in be here. in a different um in a different file. Yeah, we might we might like throw it through HTML <laughs> or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. Either way, you can see that like uh, we're defining variables here in this file that are then going to be used somewhere in our JavaScript to make this applet kind of kind of work. Um, you know, perhaps a confusing behind the scenes look at how Code Academy works. <laughs> I think it's great. Um, okay, let me. We have seven minutes left. Let me jump to some of these coding challenges. I think that we have done enough of these lessons to be able to do these. So I'm going to put some of these coding challenges on the screen for folks in chat. Um, you can either write the code to uh, solve these code challenges, or you can just kind of like describe what you would do. And uh, I'll sit like for 20 seconds on each of these and let people take a look, and then we can we can solve them. I'll also use this as an opportunity to look through the chat a little bit. So go ahead and think of how to solve this code challenge. I think it's nice. So I'm just looking at this really quickly and I'm noticing that uh, in each of the messages we've left uh, a space at the end so that everything will look nice when we need <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have a space at the end of hello there and we alternatively could have put a space there. Um, cool. So let's go ahead and do this one. Sophie, how would we 
do this. We want to create a message or a variable called full message. And how do we concatenate three strings together? So one way is to write each of the variable names. So message one plus message two plus message three. Yeah. And one thing I'll say is I said that this is one way you could do it because actually there are multiple ways that you could concatenate those strings. Um, so I think I'm not sure if that was covered in this uh, this lesson, but it's an interesting thing to point out is that like a lot of things that you might want to do, um, there are actually multiple ways to do it. Yeah, exactly. And I think like again, that's something that's subtle that could potentially be important is this is something that we actually haven't done so far in this in this class of using two operators, right? So far, we've only ever done message one plus message two. Now we're doing two together, right? We're kind of doing two steps. And so something that you might want to think about is, well, what order does this happen in? Because like math, right? With math, if I do um, two plus three times five, there's an order of operations. And so somewhere written into Python, there's going to be an order of operations. And so even like Let's see. Sophie, I don't know if, if you saw this when I was doing this, but I can you can combine strings with numbers if you multiply them. Right. Yeah. And so the question here is that message one plus message two is hello there, friend. Hope you are having a. So is the thing that's going to be multiplied, is that going to be the concatenation together, or is it only going to be message two? And so if oh, this. Okay. So it seems like it's only message two, right? The order of operations is consistent with normal math where the multiplication happens first and then uh, you know message one gets tacked onto the front. So that's something to be aware of. Even in something as simple as this, two things are happening and they're happening in a particular order. And it's important to kind of like think about that and realize that even though in this example, it's like kind of inconsequential because they happen one right after another. We got a few people in the chat giving us another way of doing this by putting the three messages within a print set statement separated by commas. Do you want to do that Ooh. below the print? Just to yeah, let me actually get rid of that print statement so I don't print it out mm -hmm. twice. So I can do message one, message two. Um... Yeah, there we go. Interesting consequences with that is, again, because I'm just doing this in a print statement, uh, I kind of am not remembering my result. I'm not saving the result anywhere, right? If I deleted that variable, I can still print that out. But now I don't have that. I haven't stored that anywhere. I can't really use it again. I would have to do something with the original messages again. That's true. OK. Hey. Errors. There are three errors in the following program. Find them all. This one's fun. Yeah, the I think the first one we very briefly covered, but the other two hopefully. Oh, and we didn't even really cover the second one. So I would, will you press run really quickly so we can just see the error message? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, error, syntax error, EOL while scanning string literal. EOL stands for end of line. And you can see that something weird is happening on line one. And you can see that little arrow pointing actually exactly to where the problem is. Yeah. So this error message is saying, basically, I expected, um, I reached the end of the, the end of the line when I still expected something. And the thing that they expected was us closing this string. This string hasn't been closed yet. It started with double quotes and it ends with single quotes. So it hasn't been closed. So we could do something like replace that single quote, but keep the single quote and put a uh, put a double quote. But now this, you know, this is green apostrophe. <laughs> um, so yeah, so th that, that's that first error message is that uh, it was, it, it reached the end of the line while still expecting the end of the, uh, the string. All right, the next one. Ah, oh, this one's pretty, this is a pretty good error message from Python of missing parentheses uh, in call to print. Did you mean this? And yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lots of people in chat are giving us all these errors too. Nice. So thank you for all the people that are, are participating in chat. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, final error name, fave color is not defined. 
What does that one mean? Oh, it's because the F and the C are not capitalized in the definition. Of the, yep. Yep, exactly. So we were asking for a variable that doesn't exist. And the reason why it doesn't exist is because Python is case sensitive. Uh, most languages for variables are going to be case sensitive. I can't think of one that's not. Um, so there we go. We only have one minute left, Alex. I know. Uh, <laughs> In fact, I won't do this one because this is using plus equals, which is something that uh, we didn't teach. So let's go ahead and leave it there. Um, we have one minute left. Um, OK, so I want to plug what's happening next. So we're going to be doing these sessions every week. Um, you can find them on the Codecademy's events page. If Kenny is still in chat, that'd be great if Kenny could drop it in chat or Sophie, if, if you could find the events page and drop, drop it in chat. So you can um, register for these events to basically get a reminder about these events every week. Um, they're always also gonna be on YouTube. So you can just um, you know subscribe to our YouTube channel or whatever and find them here. Uh, I would love feedback on this. So on the events page themselves, there are there's a feedback form uh, let us know what was helpful and what is not. Um, I know that like this is a ton of content that we're trying to jam into an hour long. And so if you would prefer us to just like go through a lesson step by step, because we jumped around to, uh, today a lot. I don't know if that's if that was a frustrating experience or not. So um, you know, if you have feedback for us, uh, you can go to those event pages and there should be a link to a feedback form in the event pages. Um, yeah, anything, anything else that I'm forgetting, Sophie? No, I think, uh, I know that this was a lot of basics and we weren't quite sure where everybody was coming in uh, to start, but hopefully this is a really good way to kind of start from the beginning and, and move through this together. Um, I am going to be personally logging on to all of these. We have <laughs> lots of different curriculum developers running these events. Um, and I think it's a really cool way, especially in this weird time that we're living in to kind of all come together and like learn a new skill together. So, um, so I hope you'll come back and, um, and keep participating and asking questions and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess last thing is that, right. We're specifically doing this like CS 101, very introductory. This is your first high school or first college set, uh, session. We're specifically doing that now because we launched the back to school campaign. There's a uh, discount on pro membership for students. Oh, yeah. um, so, uh, you know, uh, I think we've like linked all over the place to, to information about that. If you go to Code Academy, it's like a big banner. Um, so if you are interested in this kind of stuff, um, this content is all available if you're a pro member. And then obviously all of this stuff that 